Here we're gonna run through some of the anatomy of the shoulder. Here we can appreciate the pec major muscle, which is somewhat translucent. Just a lateral to that, you have the deltoid muscle and the interval between the pec major and the deltoid muscle, you can appreciate the cephalic vein. Now we're just rotating laterally and we're removing the deltoid muscle and the pec major muscle. And here you can appreciate underlying pec minor muscle and you also have the biceps muscle which is divided into the short head attaching on the coracoid process and the long head which goes into the glenohumeral joint attaching on the superior glenoid. Here we're rotating laterally, we can appreciate the subdeltoid bursa with some of the paraversal fat which we just removed. Here we can appreciate some of the underlying vasculature, part of which is the anterior humeral circumflex artery which feeds into the posterior humeral circumflex artery. Again, you can appreciate the cephalic vein. Also, you can appreciate the superficial cromioclavicular joint branch from the suprascapular artery. And now we're going to try to take a bird's eye view of the shoulder. You can see the clavicle articulating with the acromion. You can also appreciate the coracocurricular ligaments consisting of the conoid ligament as well as the trapezoid ligament laterally. You can also see the suprascapular vein and artery which feeds into the supraspinatus muscle and actually goes through the spinal glenoid notch and feeding the infraspinatus muscle as well. You can appreciate the subdeltoid bursa infraspinatus muscle, teres minor, teres major. You can appreciate the long and lateral head of the tricep muscle as well. You have the quadrangular space where the posterior humeral circumflex artery and axillary nerve run through. Now we're rotating back somewhat anteriorly. We can appreciate the lateral aspect of the shoulder. The subdeltoid bursa is removed and you can appreciate the supraspinatus tendon, infraspinatus tendon, and teres minor tendons attaching onto the greater tuberosity. So here we just rotated anteriorly. We got rid of the underlying pec minor muscle and biceps muscles. Here you can appreciate the underlying coracobrachialis muscle. You can also appreciate the musculocutaneous nerve piercing through the belly of the coracobrachialis muscle. Also getting better sense of the brachial plexus and how intricate it is and how it intertwines with the surrounding vascular structures. Now we're removing the coracobrachialis muscle and the rotator cuff musculature and just the capsule of the shoulder joint and you can see the thickening of the capsule that forms a crescent which is the rotator cable. Here again we're looking at some of the vasculature with the rotator cuff muscles removed and you can appreciate how the suprascapular artery runs through the spinal glenoid notch and from that point it feeds the infraspinatus muscle. Also you can appreciate the superior transverse scapular ligament that separates the overlying suprascapular artery and the suprascapular nerve. And you can also appreciate the dorsal scapular artery running over the superior scapula and then going down the medial border of the scapula as well. You can appreciate all the branches of the suprascapular artery in the supraspinatus fossa and infraspinatus fossa. And now we're going to rotate medially. We can start seeing the serratus anterior muscle attaching on that medial anterior edge of the scapula. And again, if there's damage to the long thoracic nerve, you get winging of the scapula. And again, we can appreciate some of the branches of the suprascapular artery feeding the acromion. And again, as well as the multiple branches in the supraspinatus and infraspinatus fossa. Now we're making the scapula translucent and we can get a really good sense of the serratus anterior muscle which starts from the ribs and essentially inserts on that medial border of the anterior scapula. And the serratus anterior, they originate from the first eight ribs and there could be about seven to ten slips of the serratus anterior and the primary motion is scapular protraction which is essentially anterior and lateral motion. Don't forget other muscles such as the trapezius muscle and the rhomboids also take part in the scapular motion. Here again is a good view of the serratus anterior muscles from a lateral perspective. Now we're making the scapula solid. Here you can appreciate the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery which feeds the humeral head. Also over the lateral proximal humerus you can appreciate another branch from the anterior circumflex humeral artery that feeds the acromion and merges with the acromial branch of the thoracoacromial artery. Also you can appreciate the posterior humeral circumflex artery merging with the anterior humeral circumflex artery. Now we're actually removing the coracohumeral ligament as well as the transverse humeral ligament. We're making the capsule almost invisible and now we can appreciate 
basically thickening of the anterior capsule consisting of the superior glenohumeral ligament as well as the middle glenohumeral ligament and the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And don't forget the superior glenohumeral ligament forms a sleeve on the underbelly of the biceps tendon to help stabilize it. Also, you can appreciate how shallow the glenoid is, but it does provide stability to prevent dislocation of the shoulder, but the shoulder is relatively easy to dislocate, certainly compared to the hip joint and most other joints in the body. You can appreciate how the acromion forms a roof over the humeral head, and those people that have complete rotator cuff tears, they can have rotator cuff arthropathy, where the humeral head is essentially riding up high and abutting the undersurface of the acromion. Also, you can appreciate that the scapula essentially rides along that posterior thorax, and it's quite amazing how mobile the entire shoulder joint really is. Now we're bringing back the neurovascular structures. And another amazing thing to consider is when you raise your arm, how all those neurovascular structures have to move and stretch with the humerus as it goes through various motions. Now we're bringing back some of the rotator cuff musculature, rotating to see the lateral aspect of the shoulder, where we're bringing back the subdeltoid bursa.